Hi everyone, welcome to the Celebrity Diaries. Sammy Davis Jr. was an American performer who had a total assets equivalent to $5 million at the hour of his demise in 1990. Anyway, it means a lot to note that his monetary circumstance was not as secure as one would expect to a great extent due to his three relationships and four kids. In addition, at the hour of his passing, he owed a faltering $7 million to the Inner Income Administration, which representing expansion would add up to roughly $13 million today. The Board of Davis Domain has too been damaged by different fights in court perceived as Mr. Broadway. Sammy Davis Jr. was a multi-gifted craftsman succeeding in singing, moving, playing instruments, acting, and even Impressionism all through his profession. He delivered various collections and showed up in more than 70 film and TV projects. His remarkable gifts procured him a Tony selection for Best Entertainer and a melodic for his part in Brilliant Kid on Broadway in 1964. Davis graced the cinema in prominent movies, for example, Porgy and Bess 1959, Seas 11 1960, and Cannonball Run 1981, notwithstanding his less-than-ideal destruction, Sammy Davis Jr.'s commitments to the music industry were perceived as posthumous in 2001, he was regarded with a Grammy Lifetime Achievement. Grant and his notorious tune What Sort of Dumb Am I were enlisted into the Grammy Corridor of Notoriety in 2002. Davis likewise got Grammy selections for Male Independent Vocal Execution and Record of the Year for What Sort of Blockhead Am I in 1962, as well as a selection for Male Pop Vocalist for Candyman in 1972. His TV work were enlisted into the Grammy Corridor of Notoriety in 2002. Davis likewise got Grammy selections for Male Independent Vocal Execution and Record of the Year for What Sort of Blockhead Am I in 1962, as well as a selection for Male Pop Vocalist for Candyman in 1972. His TV work was moreover celebrated with his program Sammy Davis Jr. S60 The Commemoration Festivity, winning an Emmy Grant for Exceptional Assortment Series Music or Parody in 1990. He got assignments for his appearances on The Swinging Universe of Sammy Davis Jr., One Life to Live, and The Cosby Show. Sammy Davis Jr. collected honors past the music and amusement industry in 1961. He was named Man of the Year by the American Relationship of Assortment Specialists, and in 1968, he got the NAACP Spiner Decoration Grant. Davis was regarded with an extraordinary reference grant from the Foundation of TV Expressions and Sciences in 1974, and he was perceived with a star on the Hollywood stroll of notoriety in 1960. His commitments were further recognized with a Kennedy Place honor in 1987 and acceptances into the NAACP Picture Grant. Lobby of Notoriety 1989, The Las Vegas Stroll of Stars 2006, the Worldwide Social Liberties Stroll of Acclaim 2008 and the Public Beat and Blues Corridor of Notoriety 2017, Sammy Davis Jr., Early Life Brought into the World on December 8, 1925, in Harlem, New York City, arose as quite possibly one of the most dynamic and flexible entertainers of the 20th century, the child of Ville artist Sammy Davis Sr. and L. Sanchez's youthful Sammy's life was saturated with the universe of amusement all along. His folks were isolated when he was only three years old, and his dad took authority over him, welcoming him out and about and showing him the specialty of dance close by his adoptive parent, Will Mastin the triplet known as the Will. Mastin threesome displayed their abilities the nation over, with youthful Sammy rapidly turning into a champion entertainer at the young age of, he handled the lead spot in the 1933 film Rufus Jones for president, stamping his entrance into the universe of show. Business. This early openness set the stage for a vocation that would lengthen over 60 years in 1943 at 18 years old. Sammy Davis Jr. enrolled in the Armed States Armed Forces during the Second Great War. His time in the military was set apart by serious racial separation. Southern white warriors exposed him to fierce treatment, including numerous occasions where his nose was broken regardless of these difficulties. Davis' versatility sparkled through. He was reassigned to the Exceptional Administrations Branch, where he could use his exhibition abilities to engage the troops, cheer everyone up, and support assurance his commitments were perceived with the Second Great War Triumph Award in the American Lobby, award when he was respectably released in 1945. Having accomplished the position of private after his release, 
Sammy Davis Jr. enthusiastically got back to the family dance scene and started performing at clubs in the dynamic city of Portland, Oregon. It was during this time that he moreover wandered into the universe of music, recording blues tunes for Capitol Records in 1949 under the pseudonym Shorty Muggins and Charlie Green. The accounts displayed Davis's adaptability and his capacity to enrapture crowds with his heartfelt voice in 1951. Maston Threesome, with Davis as an indispensable part, had an advancement second when they showed up at the famous SOS Club as the opening represent main event Janice Page, their presentation endured a simple 20 minutes anyway, the response from the crowd, which incorporated various big names, was completely excited it was during this execution that Davis's ability for impressions really shown collecting far and wide recognition from both general society and pundits the same, this undeniable turning pot. Int in Davis' vocation as he started to set up a good foundation for himself as an independent craftsman, getting acclaim for his remarkable style. Also, delivering a few fruitful collections in 1953, Davis was allowed his own TV program on a DC named Three for the street with the Willpole Threesome. This opportunity permitted him to exhibit not just his singing and moving skills, but additionally his magnetic character. The following year, Davis was employed to loan his vocal abilities to the title tune of the widespread pictures film, Six Scaffolds, to cross further extending his presence in media outlets. In 1956, Davis took on the lead job in the Broadway melodic Mr. Brilliant, in spite of the fact that the creation got blended surveys from pundits it ended up being a business achievement, running for a noteworthy 383 exhibitions. This accomplishment cemented Davis' situation as an impressive entertainer who could dit. Raw crowds and blossom with the stage Davis profession proceeded to prosper, and in 1958, he was welcomed to crown the champ of the Miss Procession of Jazz Excellence exhibition, a renowned occasion facilitated by Leon Heffen Sr. This further set Davis' notoriety and acquainted him. With a more extensive crowd in 1959, he got huge professional support when he turned into an individual from the unbelievable Rodent Pack, driven by his dear companion Blunt Cadra. The Rodent Pack, which included symbols such as senior member Martin Joey Priest and Peter Lawford, who turned out to be John F. Kennedy's brother by marriage, became inseparable from Las Vegas charm and charm. The gathering not only performed together in the amusement capital, yet additionally worked together on the famous film Seas 11 in 1960 followed by Sargent's Three in 1962 and Robin and the Seven Hoods in 1964. Davis' consideration in the Rodent Pack further raised his status and solidified his place in amusement history. In 1964, Davis accomplished one more huge achievement. He turned into the first African-American entertainer to take the stage at the famous Copacabana Club in New York City. This historic second denoted a basic step forward in separating racial hindrances in media outlets. All the while, in 1964, David displayed his acting ability by featuring in the Broadway creation of Brilliant Kid at Night, while likewise shooting a New York-based evening television show. During the day, this requesting plan shown Davis's immovable devotion to his art and his capacity to succeed in numerous imaginative undertakings. All the while, in 1969, Sammy Davis Jr accomplished a huge achievement in his music vocation when his tune I Must Be Me taken off to the highest point of the simple listen singles diagram, perceiving the need to remain significant in appeal to a more youthful crowd. Davis endorsed with Moan Records to redo his sound tragically. His arrangements to team up with the eminent name fell through, and he couldn't deliver any material under their pennant anyway. Davis' fortunes changed in 1972 when he encountered an unforeseen victory with the arrival of the Candyman, which quickly moved to the main spot on the outlines. The irresistible and energetic melody became one of Davis' generally notorious hits, catching the hearts of audience members. The country overpassed his music profession. Sammy Davis Jr. had a sharp interest in daytime TV, especially the dramas delivered by the American telecom organization ABC. He energetically made guest appearances on shows like General Clinic, pleasing fans with his magnetic presence. He likewise got a common job as Chip Warren on One Life to Live, a job that procured him a daytime Emmy Grant selection in 1980 of every 1,985. Davis confronted a critical well-being alarm when he was determined to have Croesus, a condition that influences the liver. This experience incited him to make a move 
What's more, make a significant commitment toward clinical examination. Davis liberally supported the foundation of the Sammy Davis Jr. Public Liver Foundation at the College of Medication and Dentistry of New Jersey. Thusly, he would have liked to raise mindfulness about liver illnesses and support noteworthy exploration to further develop analysis, treatment, and counteraction. Davis's choice to focus on his well-being and go without liquor was driven by a sobering advance notice from his doctor. He conceded, I didn't drink for a year. Thanks for watching this video.